The story of the dog and cat, a cyberpunk lore analysis. Hey Rivia Tumes, firstly thank you for 100 subscribers, you are all absolutely breathtaking. Cyberpunk 2077 has high quality, deep writing for many characters in the game, with all types of rhetorical devices integrated. That include personification, foreshadowing, exposition, character development, and realistic human conflict, either internal or external forms of struggles. Two fan love characters will be analyzed this video, one of them being Goro Takamura. Furthermore, the similarities between one another will be identified, but also simultaneously the differences in both their characters, traits, and ideals which was fundamentally centered on their upbringing and earlier life. Timestamps will of course be provided, so without further ado... Goro Takamura is the former personal bodyguard of Sabora Arasaka. He is a stoke man of honor and fiercely loyal to Arasaka but finds himself betrayed and out of his element in Night City. A quick fact, earlier in the game, Jackie is the narrator of the quest description. This role is then taken over by Johnny after the prologue. So Johnny's point of view of Takamura stands as follows. The only bodyguard of Sabora Arasaka who has truly done fucked up. While obeying orders, he was unable to prevent the death of his master at the hands of Saburo's son, Yorinobu. After the relic was stolen, Takamura went after the thieves eventually leading him to a landfill where he zeroed Dexter the Shawn and saved V, the sole living witness to Yorinobu's crime. In his mission to find the truth, Takamura became Arasaka's most wanted fugitive, pursued by every agent in Night City. The ex-bodyguard is driven by a desire for vengeance and won't rest until he brings Saburo's murderer to justice, even if it means working with a petty thief like V. Biography of Takamura Takamura's early life Goro Takamura was born in Shiba 11, dangerous district in Japan with the highest murder rate. His father worked at a small ramen shop within the district and his family was very poor. While bathing in a river, like all the other boys in Chiba 11, Arasaka recruits came by and recruited the cleaning boys as they often did. Takamura was chosen and felt like he had won the lottery. Takamura was conscripted into Arasaka's corporate army and eventually joined their special forces division. He was given an education and ranked top of his class in the academy. At some point, Subora Arasaka came to recruit one of the special forces operators to be his personal bodyguard, choosing Takamura out of hundreds of candidates. During his time as a bodyguard, he began to idolize Saburo and developed undying loyalty to the Arasaka family. As Saburo's personal protector, Takamura received elite cyberware, including an endoskeleton reinforcing his neck and spine. Takamura even personally trained Sandayu Oda to be a cyber ninja and bodyguard to Hanoka Arasaka. Okemura-san, Oda. Where'd you grow up anyway? I am from the slums of Chiba 11. Once when I was desperate to leave there, I... Ah, bad memories washed away by time. I long only for the simple days of childhood. I remember the chemical stench of the canal, where we boys washed our shirts. Corporate transporters sometimes passed through our slum. Arasaka selecting children, but only the clean ones. The takeaway of Takamura. Takamura was born into poverty in Chiba 11, also known as the poorest district within Japan. Chiba 11 is made up of slums and chemical filled canals. The district by 2077 had the highest rate of murders in all of the country. Because of the crime rate, Arasaka Corporation will patrol there daily. Chiba 11, if you've watched or read The Hunger Games, you'd know districts aren't sunshine and rainbows and them being with a high crime rate or all about survival, which sounds very similar in that regard. Evidently, based on Takamura's background, an analytical breakdown that would be considered is that he was groomed to become a soldier, and what spot is greatest for that in a district filled with a very high crime rate, the most out of any other district in Japan. This may make the average person feel sorry for Takamura, whilst Takamura lacks awareness to this, as he saw Arasaka as the only corporation that patrolled Chiba 11 daily due to the crime rate. When in actuality, they had a motive like any other corporation, scoping out fresh, easy to manipulate child soldiers that could be a force to reckon with in the future. What did they need kids for? To be corporate soldiers. When they chose me, I felt I had won the lottery. In the army, I was given everything I lacked before. Discipline, regular meals, and when I proved I was gifted, an education. So diving deeper, what could Arasaka expect by scoping out children in a hellhole like Chiba 11? 
And what could the groomed children who are expected to become corporate soldiers expect if they cooperated, that is? Extreme loyalty, daily meals, a psychologically infused debt to Arasaka for saving them or him, Takamura. Combat training via weapons, a profession, fighting via martial arts, and discipline. An education if you proved worthy. Development of mannerism, most likely related to traditional Japanese heritage slash ideals we see today in the world. An escape from a life of crime, poverty, and other potential traumatizing things seen in Chiba 11 on the daily. And lastly, the most important and sinister, the justification to kill, as Takamura says here to V. And all you had to do in return was kill Saburo's enemies. I sense that you judge me, and yet you have no right to. Unlike you and your friend, Mr. Wells, I was not arrogant. I did not take the easy path. Saying you got no dirt on your hands? There are no clean hands, but it is important how they become dirty. You dirty your hands for money. I, in the name of principles. Wasn't judging you. And true, you are both the corporations, their order, their world in a mindless way, yet you offer no worthy alternative. Another interesting fact about Takamura here is his standards, especially in food. It is known that he is a foodie, revealing a bit more humanity for his character. Oh, can you run and grab us a pizza? Take out the food? No, just no. If I had time and ingredients, I would prepare some onigiri with cod. Or with grilled salmon. No, even better. With umeboshi plebs. Mmm, Arasaka-sama's favorite appetizer. Simple, tasty, and filling. I found him chewing once. Pride on his face. It was a protein bar. Saburo Arasaka with a protein bar? Get out of here. Like a true soldier. Okay, enough. Well, we'll both grow hungry. Additionally, based on what Takamura says, you can also see that he truly cared about Arasaka Sama. Minor details like this show that being a bodyguard to Saburo wasn't just out of duty and being groomed, but also that he actually cared about him and considered Saburo to be his friend and mentor. Before analyzing Takamura's character fully, it is important to get a viewpoint of what Johnny thinks of Takamura here through both dialogue choices as well as the personification used here. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this Saka scum might actually prove useful. He's a well-trained dog, needs orders, that's all. And when he outlives his purpose, we'll flatline him. Chill, Johnny. He's Saka scum to you, I know that. But Garo's not a bad guy. Not a bad guy. He was Saburo fucking Arasaka's bodyguard. Think his pretty eyes landed in that gig? He's not on his A-game, sure. But even without implants, he could decommission us easily. Where's that come from? Ever seen him in action? No, just no. From the way he walks, look in his eye. We'll come back to this later. Throughout the game, you constantly see the adjective dog. Takamura calls himself dog, and others like Yorinobu's followers, dogs or hounds. Now, we part. Reconnaissance is required. What are you doing? Don't let him off his leash. Let him stray even a couple of feet. You can say goodbye to his fucking honor. And then there is Taka. Treacherous dogs who support Yorinobu. When Yorinobu fold his band of hounds. Many believe Johnny calling Takamura dog is solely used in a demeaning manner. I however think that it might be more of a backhanded compliment. Especially when used by a character like Johnny who in general is an arsehole. But he is like that to everyone and can muster up better insults. What is a backhanded compliment you might ask? A backhanded compliment is a remark which seems to be an insult but could also be understood as a compliment. Alright, I'm not saying the next person you see or that cute crush you've had eyes on in the library to approach and call them a dog. That is highly inadvisable. But what I am saying is, everything described in Takamura's early life sounds like something a straight dog would experience and what a dog would offer to an owner, if you think about it. And in this case, the dog being Takamura, and the owner being... Saburo Arasaka? Arasaka Corporation? Or both? So one thing a dog can provide is extreme loyalty. Dogs are known to be extremely territorial and loyal to owners they favor most. 
even more so than some human beings. Indebted, this sounds somewhat like a psychological depth. So what is another real life example of a psychological depth? Think of a mother and a child. A child will always have a psychological debt to their mother, as your mother is someone who has carried you in her womb, had you on your good days, your bad days, and your vulnerable days. For example, when you were an infant. Most people in this world are psychologically in debt to their mothers, as they have been taking care of you from the day you were born to the day you would move out, with diminishing losses as years progressed. And no, I'm not saying everyone raised is a diminishing loss, I'm simply saying a mother or your parents did not profit off your birth, at least in monetary value, but do when you become independent as an adult and provide value to the world such as securing the goals they have laid out for you, i.e. a college degree, grades, a job, etc. My point stands is that a dog is indebted to you for adopting it, saving its life or providing the basic hierarchy of needs for it such as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So what might a master expect of a dog? Training. You don't teach dogs an education, but you do teach them how to behave, what tricks they could perform, such as sitting or obeying certain commands. Whilst mentioning the training part and the tricks, this line makes much more sense. What is your expression? One cannot teach an old dog new tricks. So Takamura's past, present, and future is a matter of perspective. Everyone sees Arasaka as evil, but others see Arasaka as saviors. Evidence to support this is from CDPR themselves. Arasaka and people within Arasaka don't think they're, you know, being villains. Arasaka is doing terrible stuff, but there's, you know, tens of thousands of people around the world working for them. Cyberpunk's personification in action and potential hidden meanings. Chiba is a real place in Japan, but it doesn't feel like coincidence when you think about why Chiba 11 was the birthright of Takamura. This may be considered a reach, but if you were to swap out the C for an S, you would get Chiba 11. What does Shiba mean? Well, Shiba is a crypto. Oh shit, wrong video. Well, Shibas are rugged dogs that survived for thousands of years in the mountainous regions of Japan. Some quick facts about Shibas. Shibas have cat-like qualities. In many ways, the Shiba Inu is more like a cat than a dog. They are independent and can be difficult to train. They also spend a lot of time grooming themselves and tend to be extremely clean. Is this a link between the conflict inside Takamura where he is very loyal to Arasaka, but at the same time has cat-like qualities, which means he wishes he could leave Night City and Arasaka, as shown here. Sometimes I wish to become a nomad, to leave this world. Forget everything. Never too late to change. What is your expression? One cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Shibas were originally used as hunting dogs. They are notorious escape artists. Sounds kind of familiar to Takamura, right? How he escaped death multiple times and is good at espionage? Another fact is training Shibas is not for the faint of heart. They're very stubborn and can be very emotional. He does in the game actually has some sort of, you know, reason that informs it. He doesn't often, you know, always act logical. He often, you know, acts emotional as well. Shibas have undying loyalty. A Shibas personality is that they can be fiercely loyal to their family, coupled with their tendency to be a bit aloof and less needy of affection and attention than many other breeds. Arasaka-sama was a strong and disciplined man. The strongest man I have ever known. So if Takamura's personification is supposed to be that of a dog, then who is the personification of the cat in this story? They say you can become a legendary rocker boy without all the sex and drugs, the manic depression, run-ins with the law, and one toxic relationship with one another. But Johnny Silverhand's old school, the frontman for Samurai, charismatic, visionary, rebel with a cause, sworn enemy of the corporations but especially Arasaka and the mind behind the cult, singles, chipping in and never fade away. Currently residing in V's brain as a digitized tenant, Silverhand met his demise during the attack on Arasaka Tower after getting shot by Adam Smasher and subsequently flatlined by Soul Killer. But some rocker boys never really die. Point in case. Silverhand's personality construct was kept in Arasaka's lab for decades before it landed on the prototype biochip called the Relic, which, following a series of unexpected events, ended up in V's brain. If you think spending eternity in a cyberspace prison is worse than sharing your headspace with a complete stranger, you'd be dead wrong. For an egomaniac and narcissist like Johnny, it's a living hell. From the 1988 to 2000s, 
Johnny Silverhand, also known as Robert John Linda originally, was born in College Station, Texas on November 16, 1988. He enlisted into the military as a teenager, lying about his real age, and it didn't take too long to see some real action. The Central American conflict started in 2003, while in Mexico, John's life was saved by a friend who died protecting him. The conflict was devastating as the war was run by a corrupt and manipulative government. However, when their secrets were exposed, many of the American soldiers dropped their banners as they fought back by deserting the military. The government used its influence to create a powerful propaganda campaign to make the American public hate deserters. John was also one of the men who decided he wouldn't fight in the corrupt war anymore. That ultimately led to him losing his arm and a friend. He left for Night City and stayed at a hotel in Pacifica. The military and the war had changed his life forever. To forget his past, he even changed his name to Johnny Silverhand. His last name would represent the cybernetic arm that replaced an already missing limb. Johnny began the mission of the rebellion to expose corruption by starting a band. The name of the band was Samurai. Johnny started this band with his friend Kerry Uridine, originally only playing in the backstreet clubs. Their first gig was in Red Dirt, a small bar in Night City. In 2003, while playing in a bar called Rainbow Cadenza, a producer by the name of Jack Masters discovered them and, and signed them up with Universal Recording. Samurai was completed. Samurai was then composed of the co-founders, Johnny, Kerry, Denny, Nancy, slash Bess Isis, and Henry. Johnny Silverhand's music became revolutionary, starting the Rockaboy movement and becoming an overnight sensation. He rose to the top of the US charts in record time with his band. However, despite their success, Samurai struggled as personal issues made it to surface. During this time, the keyboard player, Nancy, was in an abusive relationship. She reached a point where she couldn't take it anymore and pushed her boyfriend out of a window. Rest in peace, bastard. After the NCPD discovered the body, she was arrested and taken to prison. Without her, Samurai struggled and finally split up in 2008. Johnny Silverhand, though, was still one of the most popular musicians at the time. He planned to use his star power to begin a solo career and continue to push his anti-corporation and anti-government message. Johnny Silverhand's past could not escape him, though. DBS Music wanted to sign him so desperately that they blackmailed him, threatening to reveal his true identity as a deserter of the Central American conflict. Instead, Johnny Silverhand signed with Universal Music again and released an entire album called Sins of Your Brothers, admitting that he was a deserter and revealing all the terrible things that the government had ordered. The album was widely successful and changed public perception of what it meant to be a deserter. That being said, Johnny Silverhand can be wrapped up as Robert John Linda, a famous influential rocker boy and the lead singer of the band Samurai before the breakup in 2008. A military veteran who defined the rocker boy movement to what it is today, he was the most prominent figure that fought against the corrupted NUSA government and the mega corporations, often being described as a terrorist. Okay. I'll tell you why I want to destroy Arasaka, but I'll only tell you once. Want to hear it? I saw a corpse strip farmers of water, and eventually of land. Saw them transform Night City into a machine fueled by people's crushed spirits, broken dreams, and empty pockets. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots, and now they're after our souls. Might be right. Can't really argue with you there. V, I've declared war not because capitalism's a thorn in my side or out of nostalgia for an America gone by. This war's a people's war against a system that spiraled out of our control. Johnny, it's take a war a against the fucking gotta... forces of entropy. Understand? Do whatever it takes to stop them, defeat them, gut them. If I gotta kill, I'll kill. If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. Fucking hell. Johnny's personality remains as charismatic and quite the charmer. However, he is also known to be irrational, impulsive, and manipulative. We all know Johnny has a temper and seems to always be on edge, partly due to his history in the Second Central American War. His dedication and ambitions are what kept him going, but at the end of the day, he doesn't care much for people around him, as long as they are used to accomplish his goals. Either let down or used every last person who gave me their trust. Blind, selfish bastard that I was. Johnny's age is as follows, 24 as of 2013, 34 as of 2023, 88 as of 2077 via the engram.
Interesting facts about Johnny Silverhand. Johnny is in fact left-handed, therefore the custom Mallorian Silverhand pistol was designed to accommodate him. Starting in Act 2, Johnny Silverhand writes the quest description in V's journal, often using second-person language for side quests and switching to first when he is directly involved. This is similar to the Witcher series of the game, also developed by CDPR, where the bard Dandelion writes all the journal entries for quests using second-person language and switching to first when the quest involves him. Now, based off all of these characters spoken about, it is important to conclude that everyone in the dystopian world of Cyberpunk 2077 is neither good or bad. In many interviews, Mike Pondsmith has mentioned Johnny Silverhand may be one of the main characters, but he is far from being the good guy in the story. But, as he quotes, in Cyberpunk, there are no good guys. Pondsmith's original inspiration to Silverhand was based on David Bowie and a tiny bit of Brian Adams. Johnny's personification, the cat, or Bakaneko. So in the rooftop scene with the Bakaneko, Johnny and Takamura, you'll see that Johnny slides in and lays there as he's listening to V and Takamura's conversation. There are a lot of hidden details and symbolism shown in this scene, and this is partly why I created this video, this breakdown of the scene itself. Round, it's here. Your corporate world in its glorious splendor. You show me filthy streets as if no other world exists, as if nothing else is possible. What of the millions who work for Arasaka and receive stability? Safety. The Chiba 11 slum rats? They're there, scraping scraps out of scop tins. Corpse decided that too. We cannot fix everything at once. It is the duty of the living to atone for the dead. Hanako-sama shall aid us in our mission. Or she'll make sure we die for good. The Bakaneko got sick of us, looks like. It will find its own way. Interesting facts about cats. Male cats are more likely to be left poured, while female cats are more likely to be right poured. Coincidentally, Johnny is actually left-handed. The Malorian, his pistol, is customized for his left arm. In Japan, cats are thought to have the power to turn into super spirits when they die. This may stem from Buddhist beliefs that cats are temporary resting places. This sounds very familiar in regard to Johnny's life, as he too has become a spirit in a way. That being a digitized passenger to V, as well as this scene here when he appears, and the Bakaneko noticing his appearance and disappearance and following him. There are up to 70 million feral cats in the United States alone, pretty similar to what V says here. First it was birds, then dogs. Cats actually put up a fight longest. Meaning no matter what happens to Johnny, if his goal hasn't been met, he'll keep coming back and fighting even harder. Another fact, cats and humans have nearly identical sections of the brain that control emotions. But I've been told that a cat isn't a pet, the cat is the owner, and those little cute bastards can't be controlled, unless they choose to, which seems very similar to Johnny's character once again, as he is free and can't be manipulated and uses people that can benefit him in some sort of way. Helpless against it. No matter what, sooner or later the engram wins. Yes, and from what I've heard about Silverhand, that seems to be exactly his style. Huh. I see my reputation's grown into Arasaka legend. See, and we kind of like huh. hammered that down that Johnny calls Takemura a dog. Takemura refers to himself as one, and we have the cat here next to Johnny, you know yeah. who's, you know, kind of Takemura's opposite, but also very similar to Takemura, right? And, uh, yeah, and there's always the question, did the Bakeneko see Johnny or not? Uh, we yeah. won't answer it, but you can imagine it was an intentional move on Shimon's side. Exactly. <laughs> and finally, the similarities section. What is the similarities between Johnny Silverhand and Goro Takemura? Both were groomed at a young age and enlisted in their retrospective military. For Johnny, the NUSA. For Takemura, Arasaka. Both are highly emotional, with Johnny having a temper on edge and impulsive, for Takamura being emotional and impulsive, as he says here. What will you do with him? I haven't decided yet. Are you serious? You know me, I can be impulsive. Another similarity is they both have good sides to them, but to quote one of my favorite songs, they both have buried the light deep within. This is evident to Johnny's game-long character development, where he has a softer side to him, rekindling his friendship with his older friends and his affection towards cats. Look, hey look, see that? Well, there it is. A 
Additionally, Johnny changes his ways in the temperance ending. Can't carry this around anymore, you know. Can't keep wallowing. Can't keep obsessing over what happened. Couldn't forget you anyway. I'm wearing your goddamn face. What are differences between the characters? Well, Johnny fought against the NUSA government and corrupted corporations, whilst Takamura supports them and opposed nihilists, rebels, and thieves. He cares for V throughout the game, him being a foodie, having high standards, fetching a pizza for V, and most important, being absolutely heartbroken upon learning what V has been dealing with, and having a sense of regret if V decides to be content with his inevitable death and going back to Earth in the devil ending rather than letting Arasaka help him. Going back to Earth. Going home. You will die, dear. You're alright, Takamura. I like you. Thanks for coming all the way up here to help. But one thing you never understood, and never will. What is that? Got no idea how sweet it is to be free. You speak out of bitterness. Please reconsider. No. This here's goodbye. But I'm not gonna forget you. What we did together. Goodbye, V. Another difference is Johnny can't be manipulated like Takamura. Instead, Johnny is the manipulator. Another difference between the two is Johnny doesn't really have a sense of honor, while Takamura abides by honor, loyalty. Johnny isn't loyal to anyone, he's a free man. Well, Chooms, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching and be sure to leave your feedback in the comment section. Was everything that was said add up, or was it a Halo reach and a half? Do let me know if you'd like to see more Cyberpunk lore videos, and subscribe to stay notified of further uploads. Happy New Year, everyone, and just remember, you're all breathtaking. Huh, you just discovered what it takes to become a legend. Grab your eye, let's mobilize.